Nick, I wanted to interview you after I witnessed your short film Drained. Are you ready? Yep, I am ready for your questions. What film have you watched recently that isn't horror that blew you away and why? Um, I, non-horror, huh? I think uh, there's two films that really stood out for me this year. One was Mad Max and the other one was The Martian. I think both of them kind of did the same thing where they were just non-stop stories that you didn't want to stop watching and just kept you engaged from the very beginning to the very end uh, and just worked on every level from writing to acting to directing, just everything just worked 100%. So yeah, they're really good films. Inconsiderate behavior in cinemas, snacking from noisy packaging, people texting, talking on their cell phones, talking during the film. Nick, do you actually go to the cinema or do you suffer from cinema rage and prefer to watch films at home? Yeah, I have a hard time going to movies now. Um, I definitely strategize when I find my seat placements. I try to find, uh, you know, when you buy the you pre-order seats, you can kind of see where people are at. I try to avoid large groups. And I also, unfortunately, now avoid opening weekends. I kind of wait and I'll see it at the 10 o'clock or 11 a.m. movie uh, just to avoid people for some reason who feel they can't wait an hour or two to check their stupid texts. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a big problem. And I hope uh, someday the theaters will start to regulate this stuff and start banning people from theaters. I'm serious. I think you should be banned if you're texting and never allowed back in again. I totally agree with you there, Nick. Think about it. They provide subtitled versions of films for those that are hard of hearing. They should provide special showings for considerate people that can actually sit down and not eat, talk or text for two hours. Oh, Nick, I have some episodes I could share with you about my cinema rage. During the film story creative process, sometimes the best suggestions can come from direct family not involved in the industry. Have you ever given a scenario to someone in your family, old or young, and their unexpected suggestion energised you to take your story onto another level? Yeah, um, whenever I make anything, whether it's a commercial, music video, or short film, uh, I'm always open and looking for new ideas of how to tell these stories better. Like years and years ago, when I did my my first short film at school while I was at Cal Arts, I was building the large set of the family, and my brother came to visit me, and he was only there for a few minutes, and he took some scraps of one set and put the, the, the wood pieces together in this really amazing little starburst shape on on the ground. And I looked at that shape when he walked away and it was this brilliant little thing he just kind of just made just for fun. And I expanded on the shape and it became the perfect uh, floor for the family's house. It was this, this fractured thing and I put the mom uh, right in the center of it. So it became this really amazing story point of symbolism that I don't know if I'd ever figure that out on my own. So I'm definitely open to knowing or to, to looking for things that, that's going to continue to push my stories forward. And I think uh, and any good director will do that. Isolation. Teenagers stuck in the middle of nowhere. Haunted buildings and predictable gentle horror for the masses. Have you ever thought about creating an intelligent horror film that's set within a crowded area? For example, an office block during the day in a thriving city centre, or during a busy city's rush hour? Hmm, that's a good question. I think most of the time with horror films have such a small budget, it's hard to do like this big epic scopes. Uh, maybe like I Am Legend, or maybe 28 Days Later did something similar to that. Um, I don't know, I think any story that's scary where it puts people in peril or danger is a really great idea. Uh, whether this is a good idea, I think it's a great idea. Again, it's if you've got the amazing story and characters uh, to push with it, I mean, Walking Dead is kind of the same way in certain regards of a lot of people outside, but then they also get isolated as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great idea. 
You remember how a simple, clever trailer would capture your imagination without telling you anything. You just knew you had to experience that particular film when it's released. Are you disheartened by the current film trailer trend to give away the plot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually refuse to watch trailers of movies I really want to see. Um, if I'm in the theaters, I will just do this, and I, I'm not even exaggerating. I will block out the trailer. Um, and I think the same people who are making those trailers uh, that give away the whole movie are the same people who are texting in the movies. They just don't get it. They just don't get the people actually want an experience, um, not a sales pitch. And we want to go in there totally fresh and uh, and know what that filmmaker on that journey that they want to take us on. Uh, it, it's definitely worth the while to avoid everything. I'm exactly the same, Nick. It makes my blood boil. The worst example was recently I video reviewed a film called The Hidden Face and I watched the trailer after I saw the film. It gave everything away and I'm just so pleased I didn't watch the trailer beforehand and I gave a warning shot to people if they do watch my review to avoid any other review and don't watch the trailer. It's that bad. Talk to me about a disturbing film you've witnessed over the past few years that surprised and genuinely moved you. Disturbing, huh? Um, yeah, I think probably the most disturbing one that really stuck with me was The Orphanage. Um, you know, I mean, I've got kids, and I, it's the, one of the very few movies I'll never really want to watch again. Uh, the other one is Pet Cemetery. I will never watch Pet Cemetery again. When I saw it when I was like 12 with my brother Eli, and the and Zelda, Zelda really did us in, and Zelda haunted me, still haunts me. I will not watch that movie because um, of Zelda. Really, I, I can't do it. What are your thoughts on the casting process? Do you go with your gut instinct or hope to cast someone well known to get more exposure? Or do you only cast who's right for the role? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really into casting. I will spend days and weeks, even on a small music video, like on my Five Finger Death Punch videos, I'll spend weeks casting and, and trying to find the right people, even though they aren't names and they aren't, you know, let's say professional actors per se, because for music videos, you don't get those opportunities to really book I'd say real working actors. Um, you know, a lot of them are, it's their first time acting or second or third time, but still you find those people who can do what you need just right. And they're really great at that one role and you have an amazing experience with them on the visitant. Uh, I was super lucky to get Doug Jones and Amy smart to be in it. And yeah, their names, but also they were more than perfect for the, for the part and they just elevated everything. So I think, you know, casting, is probably you know 90% of your movie if, if your actors can't get that emotional arc or that delivery that you need to tell the story you're, you're dead in the water I don't care how good your film looks or how awesome your camera is um, if your characters aren't clicking then you got nothing so I, I, I take casting very very seriously probably I put more effort into casting than I gonna say more effort but I put a lot of effort into casting when pitching for a film or TV idea, I find it surprising the lack of imagination some people have, the people that make important decisions. Yeah, you gotta keep going and play the game, but sometimes you just wanna shake that person like a rag doll until their neck actually snaps. Can you share a situation where you did regret your actions or came close to something that was out of character? Um, yeah, pitching anything is always tough. Um, I pitch a lot of commercials and it's, it's tricky because you're taking their ideas and you're telling them a way to do it that fits in their budget and realm and just how to make it all work. And I think everyone needs to kind of go through those paces of learning how to pitch and how to get your ideas and how to also defend your ideas. Um, and I, I think any, anyone who's, who's been a working director for a while can tell you that unless you can sell your ideas and convince those people that you know, kind of know what you want to do with it, um, it's the only way you're ever going to get work. And until you can do that, 
uh, it's uh, other than shooting small industrials or um, or uh, you know or like talking head interviews you're not going to go beyond that you have to learn how to pitch how to sell people's ideas back to them and if you can do it in your own way in your own style because they're coming to you for a reason um, and uh, yeah and pitching's tough it's definitely I think the hardest part of the job is just selling and pitching shooting it's the fun I want to say easy part but at least that part you know you, you kind of get through and it's it's really a enjoyable process but pitching for me is definitely the toughest and the part I don't look forward to the most but it's also the most essential part of doing it so learn learn how to sell your ideas and, and you'll have a fantastic career do you prefer to do all the editing yourself or do you prefer someone else does it or works with you on it um, for editing uh, I, a lot of times for smaller projects I do it on my own because um, I just don't have the money to hire someone who's really really great on commercials and music videos there's more money so I can uh, hire that out and work with an editor and I think being able to edit your own work is super critical um, Kubrick did it Hitchcock did it Cameron does it Fincher does it I mean all these really great people know how to edit and having that shorthand with an editor is I think really essential because when you're explaining to someone what you want to do with the scene you want their input and you want their ideas because they're very very good at looking at footage globally and and honing in the story you're trying to say and if you can speak that common language and know what to say to make them work more efficiently and better with you it can only enhance your project so I think learning how to edit is 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 a key form of filmmaking as long I mean it's with anything else is technical I mean no cameras no lenses no what formats have advantages and disadvantages because one project you may want to have a super clean look I did a, a Chrysler commercial and we used very clean master prime lenses and that was the perfect look and that's how I got that job while other videos like like certain music videos you know I wanted to get that, that vintage lens look so we got older vintage lenses and that's what sold it for those jobs so know your gear and just know like don't 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 assume because you're a director that other people can do everything for you yes there are those experts are there to help you but the more you know about their field the better you can communicate with them and get that product or that vision whatever you want to call it in your head on that screen and it's just it makes the process more much more enjoyable for everybody involved uh, but yeah I like to edit um, and I really like working with really smart editors as well I like the creative TV and film talent in Australia and I tend to be drawn to watch productions from there and the same goes for some Korean and Japanese films has there been any foreign intriguing films you've watched recently that would not be on the usual radar for most people um, I don't really know any super secret foreign stuff but I can say that Attack on Titan is probably the, one of the best things I've seen in a long time uh, for me has come out of a, a foreign marketplace I, I've seen it probably three or four times all the way through and I just love every frame of it I have friends that don't like the music uh, but I think they're wrong I think that's all part of the Japanese anime style uh, <laughs> it works again it works on all levels for me is there anything you're working on or have recently completed you'd like to mention uh, recently I, I did a bunch of Ford commercials uh, shot them in Thailand for like a month that was a pretty good experience um, you know directing overseas is always interesting um, but uh, yeah I've got some new things that hopefully we'll be shooting this year it's, it's like anything where the key is just keep pushing and pushing and keep pitching out your ideas and uh, you know I, I, you, you got to feed the beast of, um, of creativity and when projects happen go with it when they don't happen just go on to the next one so hopefully this year we'll have some neat new things coming from me share with me a cinema memory you have that you'll remember as clear as clean glass until you die cinema memory hmm. you know I, I gotta say when I was uh, when I was 16 I went to the first movie by myself which was Schindler's List and it was during that movie I decided I wanted to be a director like it was literally there's a moment in the film where I said that's what I'm gonna do and I walked out of that theater and ever since then it's every day uh, that's what I've been pushing to do so 
Yeah, it's probably definitely my most memorable experience. Nick, do you have any questions you'd like to ask me? Questions? Yeah, who's your dentist? My dentist is the talented Andrea Linza. <laughs> <laughs>